Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is April 24th, 2017. I am Rollo McFlugel and with me is Slappy Jones 2 and we are both at McFlugel.com. The show notes page for this episode is McFlugel.com slash 36. So with that, I'll pass it right over to Slappy and he's going to introduce our topic. Yeah, thank you, Rollo. And thank you, everyone, for listening today. Today we're going to discuss an article that was on philly.com, um, and this is referencing a story that Rollo wrote about three years ago, this week actually, when it, when it, when it happened. Uh, this is a story of Felipe Holland, who was delivering a cheeseburger in West Philadelphia. Two shadowy figures came up on him quick. Now, if you know anything about West Philadelphia, uh, it's not the nicest neighborhood in the world, so two, two guys in hoodies and Cargo shorts, run up on him. He takes off, gets to his car. Shots are fired. Felipe is hitting his leg and in his in his head. It went through his jaw and his, his left eye, I believe. Um, and uh, something like twelve more shots were fired into the car as he was driving away. Turns out Felipe was just working. He was a college student who was delivering a cheeseburger to West Philadelphia. Uh, the shooters were two police Philadelphia police officers, and today we find that they were cleared uh, of all wrongdoing here. So uh, I I, kind of made a long story short, but Rallo, your initial thoughts. (laughs) As I wrote about three years ago when the story came out, I asked the question, would you have shot this man? You know, putting yourself in that situation, would you have shot this guy? You know, you're not being a police officer. And I think that the vast majority of people would say no. I think every person would say no. Right. But, you know, since they're police officers, that somehow changes the situation. And a few other points about the story. Uh, the, the two police officers were in plain clothes, but they did not say who they were they didn't say you know stop we're the police that's according to several witnesses right and this is being there was a group of actually um public defenders who were out that night were in their car happened right in front of them uh the woman who got the cheeseburger delivered to her house and then there was another uh person who uh witnessed hearing gunshots and pointed in the direction that where they heard the gunshots so the cops were on the scene because there was a report of gunshots in the area right now i i think it's important to know in in every article we've read is it just that there was a report of gunshots no dead body no wounded body just a report of gunshots uh according to the witness who directed the cops the cops went in the opposite direction to where she pointed to hearing the gunshots from um so you know, why, why they came out, Yeah, I, I realize you're on the scene, you heard there's gunshots, but this guy's running away from you. And the other thing is, the other important part is that there had been a, a string of violent muggings and robberies against delivery men in that neighborhood. And Felipe presumably knew that, which is why when two shady guys at night, right after you make a delivery... Came out of an unmarked car, didn't right. say that with the police, didn't have a badge out. So it's the perfect situation to get mugged. You may have just, you probably have cash on you because you're making deliveries. And, you know, two guys are walking up to you. Hey, yo, hold up. In his mind, I'm about to get robbed. I better run in my car, which is exactly what he did. And so what what blows my mind about this is that, okay, first of all, even assume because I don't believe that these two police officers, you know, heard oh, there's a report of gunshots. They didn't go and, and their heads are not thinking. Yeah, let's go, let's go shoot someone in the face. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that that wasn't on their minds. That they didn't want they they did not intend to shoot an innocent person. But let's go through what happens. All right, so they hear that there's gunshots reported. They walk up to a guy. Just the first guy they see, they say stop, don't say who they are. The guy runs to his car and starts driving away. Not at them, although I think they said that they were protecting themselves because they jumped in the middle of the street. And so the car is driving at them because that's the way the car was pointed. 
So most people, if there's a car driving towards you, you just kind of step out of the way. But they, I guess, stood their ground and decided that, hey, our, we're under a threat now, so let's, let's unload, our, unload our guns into this car. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you, it's, it's the classic, oh, shoot, shoot first and ask questions later. But why, it, is that really the kind of customer service you would want from an organization? Yeah, I mean, let's say that, that the guy, you? let's say the guy running was the guy who apparent, who allegedly fired shots. Um, what I, I, like I, I mentioned earlier, what I think is interesting, never said what was shot. So someone heard gunshots, but no human was shot. They didn't report on any windows being shot at or anything being shot at. So we don't even know if there actually was a gunshot. Um, you think they'd go <laughs> at least identify themselves. I'm sure they had guns drawn. It's two on one, you know, see if you can at least have a conversation. The guy takes off running. All right. I understand pursuing him. Put your lights on, pull him over. Sure. I wouldn't, I mean, that would have been fine. Now, of course, a license all, plate number or something. I mean, yeah, no, I'm sure people are going, yeah, but you don't know you're not in that situation. But don't err on the shot side of shooting someone in the face, though. That, that, that's right. the main issue. And and if, as people say, these are the guys putting their lives on the line every day, why aren't they trained better? Why aren't they trained to de-escalate a situation? Why wouldn't they at least be trained to identify themselves? Uh, in fact, in this article, it does say that um, training protocols were changed over this. And these guys were on the force for two years in plain clothes. That's no longer allowed. There's a couple other issues here. I recommend reading the article, which will be linked. But um, why, why don't I just read a couple excerpts from the article that I think are interesting? Um Well, this is a side point, but uh, the fact that the officers were never prosecuted, I just want, if it were anyone else in any similar situation, even if they had a real problem with that guy, would anyone else be not charged with a crime here? Like, let's say that that man running just raped a child or something, and he was caught in the act in a plain clothes c- civilian regular guy went after him and fired 14 shots at the car. Do you think that guy would be charged with something? Um, a good chance of it. But this is what one thing I thought was interesting in the article. And this is a quote. <clears throat> there have been more than 430 officer-involved shootings between 2007 and 2016. That's in Philadelphia. The district attorney's office has never charged any on-duty officers involved. Um, that's end quote. That's pretty incredible. So they're saying all... 430 times an officer fi- fired a shot. It was legitimate. It was legal. It was reasonable. Uh, we, we talked about a guy, um, it's probably about a year ago. Craig, uh, Craig, what was his name? Craig Love? I think so. Yeah, he fi- fired a shot to break up a fight, and they had the U.S. Marshals after him. He didn't shoot anyone. He actually broke up a big fight. And the U.S. Marshals had to track him down. Yeah, it was a fight, by the way. We got more information from someone who knew uh, what was going on there. Situation where if he didn't break up the fight, people would have gotten really seriously hurt. There was, yeah, from... One side uh, showed up with for a fist fight. The other side showed up with baseball bats. Right. Um, and that's from a source who was there. So someone likely would have been hurt if that gun wasn't pulled out and fired. Nobody did get hit. And uh, the police commissioner was saying how this guy's a thug and a gangster and he's got to be stopped and this can't happen in our township. But then what kind of example do you set when 14 shots are fired in an innocent man ruining his life forever? Yeah, uh, he, it was a kid suffers, trying to work his way through college. He suffers from seizures now. As a result. Yeah, there's there's uh, bullet fragments in his brain that can't be removed. There's it's pretty an, sad. There's another interesting quote from that article, and it says, "As of last week, Holland was still referred to as quote the offender on that site." The referring to the yeah, uh, they police department's even, website. So haven't even dropped that. He's not the victim. He's the offender. The offender was delivering a cheeseburger. 
the way that they always word everything is so terrible. Like the the United flight, where the uh, the doctor was was pulled off by the police and got a concussion and a broken nose. The way the police report was written, it was you know you watch the video and you see the police were just manhandling the guy, throwing him around like a rag doll, and they smash his face against the armrest. In the report, it said. As he was being removed, I know, this is not a quote, I'm paraphrasing. As he was being removed from his seat, his face hit the armrest. It's always like such passive voice that they use. And in this case, they're calling, referring to him as, as Holland as the offender. Come on. I mean, he was never charged with, and that's the other thing. There's a lot he of stories. He wasn't charged with anything. There's a lot of stories where someone gets shot, whether it was Michael Brown or Eric Gardner gets choked to death by the police. And they always, people, especially on the more conservative side, love to point out, oh, this guy had a history, or this guy did this wrong, or that wrong. It kind of, to rationalize it, well, it may have not been the best move by the police, but he wasn't a good guy anyway. I don't, as far as I know, there's nothing that they can point to. This guy was working his job, and he was in college. So he's doing like the two, you know, conservative uh you know, talk a little bullet points of how you're how you're a good person by you're trying to better yourself by going to college and you're and you're taking care of yourself by working a job. And he's working a job in a bad area. Like you said earlier, West Philly isn't exactly the, the nicest place to be and then there is also you know, all the string of robberies that were going on. So you wanna talk about putting your well being on the line to earn a buck. This was Felipe Holland. Yeah, just just to pick another quote out of the article this is from the police spokesman uh he says no disrespect to miss miss denise she was one of the witnesses that's her recollection of facts he said the officers rendered their recollection of facts too no one is no one is cited here for lying the problem is there's only two guys who saw it the way the police officers saw it and it was them yeah and so would would you get the benefit of the doubt in the same situation, the facts are 14 shots were fired at a car. Two of them hit the guy. Would anyone else get that benefit of a doubt? No. No matter how dangerous their job was or what their job was for that matter. You can have a video of exactly what happened as a police officer and still get the benefit of the doubt. Like and Kelly so, Tom, uh, was Kelly Tom, I'm blanking on this, Kelly Thomas. Is that his last name? I think so. The guy got murdered by the the police officers. He's schizophrenic, and he's just literally not doing anything. And they, it's all on video. And the police officer puts his fist up to him, sees this, see this, I'm going to kill you with this, and then proceeds to beat him to death, and goes to trial and not guilty. Well, I mean, he's just doing his job. And another point to this story too that I don't think we mentioned yet that the the point of this um, article. Not only that they got cleared, but that the police department, Philadelphia, settled for $4.4 million with the guy. Yeah. Um, so and so not, what does know, that There's say? no wrongdoing, but we got to pay you out. The largest lawsuit payout in the history of the department. Right. The city, you know, clearly thinks something egregious happened. Then why are, why are the cops back out on the street again? Why is not, they're not held responsible for anything they did? And that's why. That's the reason why. You can talk about... How, oh, it's just a couple bad eggs. But you know what? All the, quote, good eggs aren't turning into bad eggs. And when the bad eggs do something, nothing happens. And that's why people, middle class people, more and more don't trust the police. Right. It's, yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, what kind of signal are you sending where you pay out $4.4 million and say the cops did nothing wrong? Then why'd you pay out four point four million dollars? Exactly. But who's who's prosecuting the police officers? Well, you know. Oh, never mind. I, I, I I'm sorry. That the police department was investigated. So that's why they cleared them. They investigated themselves and found nothing wrong. Oh well, yeah. I mean, as long as you're investigating yourself, <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's I mean, who's who's the? You have a a. The police department, which is a government organization, gets tried in a court that is also a government organization. Hmm. You think there might be a conflict of interest there or something? I mean, they all know each other because... 
Yeah, and the problem is this, I you know, I think people think police shootings, because you'll hear it all the time in, well, I hear it all the time, and you see it in comments on the article. Just Whenever a cop line. shoots someone, it's na national news, it's all over the place, you know, but they get shot at every day. But that's just simply not true. Um, even in this, this article, it says 406 happened in the last, I don't know how many years it was, 10 years, 8 years. Uh, that's 400 shootings. Has many of them made national news? Did this one make national news? I think it might have. I, I saw an article from the Daily Mail, which is maybe it did. Okay, okay. But, I mean, it didn't gain much traction. I mean, out. out I mean, I don't in know Philadelphia. How I know most people that I talked to didn't know really anything about it. No, especially three years after the fact. Right. Um, nobody knows about it. But just, you know, to make that case that every time a cop shoots someone, it's national news, but they get shot at every day just isn't true. And you can look at the statistics um, yourself. Yeah, it's uh, it's just appalling that that you can shoot someone in the face who was doing absolutely nothing wrong and would have acted in the same way any any normal, rational person would have acted. I, I'm in a and I'm a rough neighborhood, and there's been a lot of muggings of people, and there's guys in a hoodie walking up to me at night, telling me to stop. Of course, I'm running to my car and trying to get away. Yeah, three witnesses thought it was a carjacking. <laughs> so clearly, the guy wasn't attacked. You know, didn't appear to be a threat. It looked obviously like he was trying to get away. I, uh, I guess, let's, if let's let, just go ahead. Well, let's let's say the guy. I can't remember if I, my short-term memory is gone. Let's say the guy did fire the shots. He didn't hit anything. Is it really worth killing him over? Right. It's no. I know. I know you didn't need me to answer that question, but no, it's not. And that's where. Just because, and generally speaking, just because someone commits a crime doesn't mean. You need a death sentence for them <laughs> on the spot. You know, yeah. judgment by the police, that thin blue line thing that they love to talk about. It's uh, anyway, it's absurd. I, it's it's a sad story. And I think you should read the articles that we link. Uh, it has a lot more information on the discrepancies between the witnesses and the police officers. The mixed message it sends when you pay four point four million dollars in a settlement and then say nothing bad happened, and uh, you know I, I even think most people who read this article I don't think even the people who typically will support the police no matter what I don't even know that they would defend them here, but they also won't be upset that they're back on the force, right? And they won't be upset that they're not being charged. They'll, they'll clearly say, oh, they're bad apples. Those guys, you know, that was wrong. They shouldn't fire 14 shots at a pizza delivery or cheeseburger delivery guy. But um, not too many people are going to be calling for these cops to be off the streets. No, and that's, that's the funny thing about it is people can recognize when something wrong like that happens, but they still won't. Like you're not allowed anywhere near a school if you have a gun charge, yet you're going to put these people – to be the ones in charge of, air quotes, keeping peace with guns. This is insane. It's absolutely insane, but that's the way it is, and that's why people don't trust cops. Yep. So. And, and it also goes to show, because this this was a slam dunk case of the, of the police absolutely being in the wrong, the victim absolutely being in the right, and nothing really happens. You know, you got the settlement and everything, but but the police officers, nothing happens to them. And I think this is why it's very important that when these stories come up, that you make a big deal about them and, and spread them and get get people riled up over it. Because if there's not public pressure, they won't do a thing about it. No, they'll sweep that under the rug so quick, put it aside. In fact, the witnesses even said that. Um, you know, when they called to give a statement the next day, because at the scene, the cops didn't want to talk to them. At the scene the next day, they said they got the feeling like the cops just wanted them to go away. Um, so they were going to try to keep this as hush-hush as possible. But anyway, I think that sums up the story pretty good. Uh, like I said, check out the articles. And uh, we wish the best to Felipe. Hope he's doing well. 
uh, $4.4 million probably isn't enough for him. Yeah, for it's, what he had to go through. It's very um, easy for people to say, "Oh, that's not that he's getting. You know, he's going to be a millionaire now." Uh, he was a twenty-year-old kid going to school and working. The reason why those payouts are so much is because your quality of life just gets destroyed, and that's not for that four point four million dollars. I, I don't know exactly. That's the going to medical bills, man. Yeah, that's to make your That's to make your life bearable moving forward. And that's not to let you I mean, have and sitting pretty on a. You, you know, on your on your yacht, he's got he's got bullet fragments in his brain that they can't remove, and the Philadelphia Police Department's response is, "Oops." Yep. You know, here's a couple bucks, kid. That we're gonna well, our guys got to get back on the streets while they had paid vacations since then. Yeah, it's absurd. So, with that, uh, I have a a free market story to tell. Let's hear it. So on Friday, I went to pick up a suit that I purchased and the week before and had tailored for me. So I go to pick it up, and one of the salesmen sees me, and he takes me to the to the back where they have the fittings and everything, and says, go ahead and try on the pants. Come right out. So I put the pants on, come out, kind of waiting there, waiting there, waiting there. Waited there. I don't know how long I was standing there waiting, but it was it was forever. And finally, he comes back over. And he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I, I forget what his excuse was, but you know, he put the suit jacket on, and because I didn't know what I was supposed to do, um, I didn't know if I needed like their blessing because I could put on a suit. It feels or feels okay to me, but I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not Mister Fashion you don't, over here. Believe it you or don't not, wear suits in the refinery. No, but I don't. And believe it or not, I'm not like Mister Fashion that I know how things are supposed to look and fit and everything. I just put it on and hope it's it all natural to you. Yeah. I hope it doesn't look completely ridiculous. So we try the suit on and everything's good. And, uh, I needed to buy a belt. So I mentioned that to him. He got me the belt and I'm getting ready to pay for it. And he says, uh, yeah. So for your patience, cause I, I, I really do apologize. Make, make you wait back there for your patience. I'm taking half off the belt. And it wasn't a cheap belt. It was a $60 belt. So he took off 30 bucks for it. Pretty good deal. Yeah. And he said, you know, I appreciate your business. Uh, again, apologize for that. And he, I think they gave me a garment bag for free too. Because they, right, so- the guy brought out my suit and it was just in a plastic bag. And he goes, oh, go, do we have any garment bags? Go get it. Go get him one. So, he, the, you know, they value, I'm one person. I'm not going to make or break that company if I never go back there again. And in the beginning, I was kind of just standing there like, oh, they must be busy. But after you're standing there a while, I was starting to get annoyed. You get a little bit annoyed, yeah. What's going on here? What are they doing? So maybe... Leaves a bad taste in your mouth right. for the next time you want a suit. But now, give you half off the belt, maybe you'll come back. Yeah. Maybe you feel a little better. Absolutely, I'm going to go back. Because it shows that they value, you know, they value the say, individual. Why would they do that? Because they want my business. And because they want me to go on... The Rollo and Slappy show and talk about... And promote and it, them. Yeah. It was Men's Warehouse, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. and it was one guy, and I don't think he went back and got his manager's permission or something to do that. I think that if that situation happened, then I think the management would say, oh, good job. Good good for doing that. Maybe maybe make sure the customer doesn't get, you know, standing before, there for a while. But, you know, you, you made everything good, and I, I left with a smile on my face and, and was happy. You might go on, leave a review. Suit was nice, fit good. I had to wait for 15 minutes while I stood and stared at myself in the mirror waiting for this guy to come back. Yeah, not a good him, not a good no, thing to stare at for a while either. No, not at all. And then you, you end up rating them two or three stars instead of five. You know. And then I go on, I go on this show and say, Oh, they made me wait, so I'm gonna trash. go I'm gonna go to Joseph A. Bank next time. Thank goodness for the market where I have yeah. options. Or, or you, or you recommend the state takes over the suits. And Absolutely. Well, you don't have to wait. And that's not the on, the only uh, you know customer service oriented thing. Um, it happens all the time. Like uh, a, a Craig, kind of a last couple months on Craigslist when I bought my tractor. The uh, the guy I bought it from mentioned that there was a, a bad there was a leak because he put the uh, a seal on the wrong side of a, a cover plate. And so he let me know that. Whereas if I found it afterwards, the salt was leaking, then I'd be a little bit annoyed at him. But 
found a way to slide it in. I did. And I waited till the end. That's all that's all I thought about all day today. I didn't prepare for the that's episode, good. didn't I just thought about how am I gonna work the tractor into this week? So she got it. You so cre- anyway Slappy any- created a monster with that, by the way. Yeah. Your tractor created the monster. Yes. So anyway, thanks for joining us this week. Yes. It was funny. I was uh, when I was thinking about what we should do before you sent me the link to this article this morning. I was like, oh, well, we should probably do an episode where we're not complaining about how the state does something bad. Maybe maybe a positive thing, or just maybe talk about an economic thing, just kind of a, a neutral topic. But then you sent me that. I was like, oh, there's no. <laughs> we have to talk about this. I know. I prefer to talk about the happy stuff. But this was a case that's local to us. It was something we kind of covered in the past, and it's really sad. And it does, it's not getting the attention it should. And so there was a need to. Absolutely. Um, but let's get back to happy stuff next week. Yes. So with that, the show notes page again is mcflugel.com slash 36. Also, if you didn't check out the episode last week, where you can find mcflugel.com slash 35, we interviewed Matter Pelling, an Idaho congressman who made a bit of a gaffe talking about uh, inflation and gold and He was cool enough to come on the episode and and explain what happened. So uh, I recommend giving that a listen. You might be surprised with with what he said. But also uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the website. And uh, you can find the links to all of that. And also for uh, following the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher on the show notes page, mcfuga.com slash 35. So... Thanks for listening again. Be sure to share, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Tell your friends. Peace.